What's going on guys, it's Bdoms, and today I'm bringing you guys a, another reaction video. Uh, today we are doing the top 20 most offensive Jimmy Carr jokes. Uh, I'm going to warn you guys, I've seen a little bit of Jimmy Carr. I know... I know a lot of people get offended. So if you're one of those people who are easily offended, I know it says most offensive jokes, but this is Jimmy Carr. His least offensive jokes are usually offensive to somebody. Um... I don't want to be seeing my comments full of people saying this is disgusting or, you know, whatever. If you're going to be like that, just don't watch this one. Um, not all of them are going to be like this, but I felt like I had to throw that out there because I know some people are going to get upset by this one. And that's the point. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Carr really likes to push boundaries. So I'm excited for this one. I hope you guys are too. Um, I actually, I recently, like, I've I've known about Jimmy Carr, but I recently, like, got into watching some stuff about him, or of him, uh, mostly through, like, 8 out of 10 cats. Uh, I got into that in 8 out of 10 cats do Countdown, and uh, just from there, I've, I've watched basically everything, every, like, show that he's been on. Um, also, I know Sean Locke recently died. If people want me to react to, like, a best of Sean Locke, I will. Um, I've seen him on those shows, but I've never actually seen his stand-up. I think I saw like one clip on the day he died of his stand-up, and it was actually really funny. So if you guys want to see that, let me know down below. With that, let's jump right in. Pope Benedict. Incidentally, he's called Pope Benedict because he comes with a hollandaise sauce. <laughs> Hang on, that's not a hollandaise sauce. <laughs> Benedict. And we're starting out strong. As head of the Catholic Church, Pope Benedict is the boss of every Catholic priest in the world. He's effectively king of the pedos. <laughs> I read about a Catholic priest that exposed himself, so they defrocked him. <laughs> they don't help themselves, do they? <laughs> well, they do, that's part of the problem. Oh my god. <laughs> Wetting your bed is in. I don't think there's any topic that he won't touch on. I mean,. Yeah, he even touches on race and all that, so it, I, I like Jimmy Carr. I think we need more comedians like this because I'm all about being politically correct, like 100%, don't get me wrong, but you can take it too far, and I feel like Jimmy Carr kind of reminds people, like, you can push the boundaries without being a horrible person. Like, there's a difference between saying a joke and being a horrible person. At least that's my opinion, but... Some people don't see it that way, and a lot of comedians are getting canceled now because of it. And it's really sad because, honestly, comedy is one of the best things out there. So, anyways. Embarrassing as a child, but as an adult, <laughs> wetting a child's bed is mortifying. Hold on. I think That's I stopped. <laughs> wetting your bed is embarrassing as a child, but as an adult, <laughs> wetting a child's bed is mortifying. <laughs> it's almost impossible to explain that shit away. In Palestinian passports, <laughs> under occupation, do they just put Israel? <laughs> that joke is only there to test where the Guardian readers are sitting. <laughs> no further questions, back to the knob gags. Did you see the story about Gary Glitter? There was a GCSE music question about Gary Glitter. How bad's that? I have no idea who Gary Glitter How bad is. How that? A GCSE music question about a Gary Glitter song. Because if there's one artist you don't want to associate with the phrase, shh, turn over, you've got an hour. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, Google. Who is Gary Glitter? According to Wikipedia, Paul Francis Gad, known professionally as Gary Glitter, is an English former glam rock singer who achieved success in the 1970s and 1980s, known for his extreme glam image of glitter suits, makeup and platform boots, and his energetic live performances. No idea who that is. Okay. I should probably leave Glitter alone. He just wants to settle down and have kids. <laughs> I had a similar thing with Hurricane Sandy. You remember Hurricane Sandy that devastated the eastern seaboard of America? All I wanted to say was it was the worst thing to hit New York since those two planes. <laughs> I mean, he's so not wrong. One. A lot of people like to smoke cigarettes after sex, but you can't <laughs> buy cigarettes until you're 16. So I have to get them for both of us.
You think it's wrong I'm buying a 15-year-old girl cigarettes? You think it's wrong I'm fucking her? <laughs> I'm kidding. Kidding does sound like a verb for child abuse, doesn't it? I'm kidding. Are you joking or touching kids? Treat them mean, keep them keen. You all heard that expression? Treat them mean, keep them keen. Treat them mean, you will keep them keen. If that was really true, if that really worked, treat them mean, keep them keen, wouldn't the Jews absolutely adore the Germans? <laughs> I mean, probably. Really? really? A round of applause on a joke about the worst thing that's ever happened? <laughs> ever? Where do we go from there? Has anyone in here ever tried any DIY? Give us a shout if you've ever tried any kind of DIY, yes? I'm yeah. terrible at DIY. Yeah, Actually, Can anyone here I'm terrible at DIY, but the green screen behind me, if you guys want to see how it's set up, I did post a picture on my Instagram. Not trying to, like say you know go follow me on instagram i don't post that much over there so it's whatever but if you want to see it it, it i <laughs> that's a diy setup let's just put it that way and i've i've improved it since i posted that picture who's ever tried diy hand on heart tell me they don't have a little bit of admiration for the work that fritzel did <laughs> the work that what it's not easy. a little bit of admiration for the work that fritzel did <laughs> Another British not easy, but term I don't get, I guess. It's not easy to be a tidy workman. I'm not saying I approve of what he did down there, but he built a cellar without his wife even fucking noticing. <laughs> I'm just saying credit where credit is due. I, okay, so I don't get the reference, but I get the joke. Um, I'm guessing it's somebody who built like an under, or not an underground, but like a hidden room in their house or something and kept somebody kidnapped there or something wow. a round of applause for a fritzel joke <laughs> you may be my kind of town <laughs> he was described in uh, the daily express newspaper as the most evil man in austrian history uh not even close i don't know who it is but nope <laughs> hitler A lot of people forget that Hitler was a German. Smart, sexy, uninhibited. Of course, it turned out to be a 12-year-old paraplegic boy. Look how chubby-faced he is. Oh, my. Like, his body is the same, but look at his face. Wow, okay. I'll be honest, the sex was disappointing. I'm going to go back because I missed that. <laughs> I met an incredible girl on the internet. Smart, sexy, uninhibited. Of course, it turned out to be a 12-year-old paraplegic boy. I'll be honest, the sex was disappointing. Oh, I think we've reached a barrier there, haven't we? <laughs> and we will laugh at that and nothing more. Well, fair enough. Right, well, I feel we've warmed up. Let's try some properly offensive jokes, see how we get along. 99% of women kiss with their eyes closed which is why it's so difficult to identify a rapist. <laughs> Let's have a little time out there and discuss the rules of the gig. Feed line, punch line, I'll take care of that. And then you can either laugh, you can laugh and applaud, I'll be flattered and delighted, or you can go, ooh, <laughs> in a disapproving style. -y. What you can't do is laugh, applaud, then look round and go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, own it. Let's give it a go. I saw a headline in the Evening Standard. It said, Football Rapist Quiz. I thought, was that a story or a competition? <laughs> Why not suggest fucking in the disabled toilets? <laughs> That's what they're for. That's why they've got that handrail for more exotic positioning. <laughs> Don't give me that look. In my defense, when I was in there, I was fucking a cripple. <laughs> and I'm 90% sure it was consensual. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> <laughs> but that is Parkinson's for you.
my girlfriend uh, recently had a miscarriage. You know, the, the best thing about Jimmy Carr is like, yeah, you can definitely tell like his jokes are, you know, scripted and all that. Like it, he's basically like reading off a teleprompter or whatever. Um, at least that's what he does on like all the other shows he's on. I don't know about his stand up. I haven't like sat down and watched like full stand ups of his. Um, but he just he's always got a joke ready, like always. And it's always funny. And it was doubly bad because I had to pay for it. <laughs> friend uh, recently. Had I know. I, I know. I stopped at the wrong time. I've story. seen that joke before, but my girlfriend uh, recently had a miscarriage, and it was doubly bad because I had to pay for it. <laughs> that feels like we're getting somewhere. <laughs> And I realize an abortion can be a very upsetting thing for a woman. <laughs> but at the same time, who doesn't get a little confidence boost when they lose a bit of weight? <laughs> right, let me try and offend you. Um, all right, when I was at school, a mate of mine got caught wanking in the showers. Nothing? Well, it ruined the school trip to Auschwitz. <laughs> Here's the thing, I don't like swearing during sex. Who wants to hear that kind of language, especially from a child? Oh, my God. Oh, the look you gave me there. You prefer a sweary kid. Fair enough. This might offend some of you. People say, smug, sanctimonious people, in my opinion, but people do say from time to time you hear them, Princess Diana should have been wearing a seatbelt. If she'd been wearing a seatbelt, she'd be here with us today. To those people, I say this. I say, you try snorting cocaine off a cock in the back of a limo while wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> you can't be fucking done. I mean... It's a brilliant job, this. It's like I'm not even going to go there. Half talking to people, <laughs> telling them jokes, building up this reservoir of goodwill. But then you're expected just to fuck off. It's a bit weird. With your permission, I'd like to piss away some of that goodwill. Yeah. On an unpleasant joke. You know, sometimes I'll tell a joke that's a bit edgy, and I feel as an audience, you go, oh, that's a little bit close to the, go on then, you. <laughs> what are you like? I'd like to tell one now that'll make you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would you like to hear it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's sure. a joke about love. Can love conquer all? All do the practicalities of life get in the way? Well, a great example of this is made to December relationships, relationships where there's a bit of an age gap. Can love conquer that divide, or does life get in the way, the practicalities? There's probably as many different opinions as there are people in this room. Here's my opinion, for what it's worth. I think you know a girl is too young for you if you're having to make the aeroplane noise to get your cock in her mouth. <laughs> Here comes the train into the tunnel. Thank God. There's three things I liked about that joke. Firstly, I, I like the fact it's a bit edgy. I like edgy jokes. It's about as edgy as I'd want to be. Second thing I like about it, next time you're being intimate with your partners. <laughs> I know you're sat there thinking, I think he's a bit too mature for that. He's thinking, ba da 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 <laughs> Third thing I like about that joke, probably later on tonight, maybe tomorrow or the next day, someone's going to say to you, oh, you were at a comedy show. Tell us a joke. <laughs> I guarantee you that is all you're going to be able to think of. <laughs> and you'll fuck it up. I was fucking a child in the face. <laughs> you were what, you fucking maniac? <laughs> do you want to come and visit a hospice? It's palliative care for teenagers. Yes, I do. I got that call about six years ago. I said, yeah, I'll go. I didn't know what some of those words meant. I thought it sounds all right, teenagers. I imagine that'll be fun. Now, it transpires, palliative translates to dying. And I found myself in a situation where I went, well, I've got to go. I've said I'll go. And thinking, this is going to be shit. And no, like, in all honesty, that would be horrible. Like, you don't know what you're agreeing to, and then all of a sudden you're going to, like, a, a ward of dying kids. Like, that's not easy. I mean, I, I've worked in a hospital. I've seen a lot of stuff. It's not easy, so I give him credit for going. I thought this is going to be fucking shit. 
but I said I'd go, so I'll go. So I went there with very low expectations. I thought, I'm gonna be, I'll, I'll be lucky to get through this without tearing up. I went there, it was genuinely, I mean, I couldn't believe what a fucking arsehole I am. Because it was genuinely inspirational. It was brilliant to go. If you get a chance to visit a hospice, go to a hospice. They're amazing. Because I, I don't know what inspires you, but I like the idea of carpe diem, living in the moment, now being where happiness is. And if you meet life-limited teenagers, they're having that because they're aware of how precious time is. And I think we often forget in our day-to-day -day lives. So it was amazing to go and to be around. I've been back many times since, and I'd recommend it as a thing to do. It's really fun. They don't want to be shut away. They want to be part of society. The thing that blew me away when I went there was an incident. So if I go out to get coffee before the show, if I go to Starbucks, obviously my coffee shop of choice. <laughs> Similar views. But if I go out to get coffee before the show, right, if there's a group of 15-year-old girls in the coffee shop, they'll be really flirty with me, not because I'm some super attractive dude, but because I'm a celebrity, and there's a cachet to celebrity in our society, for better, for worse. There just is, it's a fact. So I'm used to that kind of flirting in that context. I wasn't expecting it within the context of palliative care for teenagers in a hospice. There's a girl in there, she just turned 15, pretty little thing, and she's a massive comedy fan. And she had all the DVDs, seen everything on YouTube, like really into it. And she was really flirty, and really tactile. And I thought, well, all she wanted was a kiss. And I thought, well, where's the harm? She's gonna be dead before she can testify. <laughs> I can see you think that's bad, but I can make that worse <laughs> with just two words. True story. <laughs> You know, there was actually an episode of House where something similar happened. Um, Jesse Spencer's character, what's his name? Chase. Um, Chase is in a situation like that. It was like a 10-year-old girl or a 12-year-old girl or something. And she basically, like, the only thing she wanted was to kiss somebody before she died. And he ended up doing it. And it was like a real, like, morality issue. I mean, to me, I know it might be controversial, but to me, it's like it's a dying kid. It's not like you're taking advantage. Like the 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 laws are in place to stop people from taking advantage of kids, not making like a, one of the, a dying kid's only wishes come true kind of a thing. Like, I don't know. I don't really have that big of a problem with it. It is a true story. It just happens to be about a different Jimmy. <laughs> it's a very gray she area. Like a gay, but... Fuck a woman. Shit in her cunt. <laughs> oh my god. I know, I know. I know. Don't think I don't know, because I know. I know. I know. I know. There's no use giving me a look as if I didn't pay £25 to listen to this film. Because you did, and you know you did. <laughs> Treat them mean, keep them keen. That's what they say, isn't it? Treat them mean, keep them keen. But I think you've gone too far if you're using a Stanley knife. <laughs> of course, a lot of women stay with their men, even if their men hit them. A lot of women will stay with their husbands, even if their husbands beat them. I tell you what they need. A slap. <laughs> Where's your self-esteem? <laughs> Silly cow. She was tiny. <laughs> of course, the thing people never say about domestic violence, and it strikes me as being just so very obvious, but people never say this about domestic violence, is just how fucking stupid it is. I mean, you're hitting your wife. It's your wife. You might as well key your own fucking car. <laughs> Think about it. You don't like her now. You're not going to like her anymore with two black eyes and a bit of a face on, are you? <laughs> there are places in the country where that's just a joke. I did that joke in Preston. It was like marriage guidance. <laughs> it got a round of applause. Well, I thought it was a round of applause. It was actually people hitting their wives. <laughs> I don't want to make a big deal of this, but I recently adopted a newborn African child. He was just seven pounds, plus postage and packing. <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> if only they put holes in that box. <laughs> and that is the joke, interestingly, that Richard Curtis said was a bit much for the comic relief gig. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. I love Jimmy Carr. It's great to actually, like, just laugh. 
and it's really hard not to laugh at Jimmy Carr, like, unless you're somebody who gets super offended, but if you are, you're not watching the video at this point, so I'm not worried about offending you guys. Um, but yeah, he's just... Comedy is such a great thing, so if you guys want to see some more comedy reactions, let me know down below. Like I said, I, I was really considering doing a Sean Locke um, stand-up, like, compilation thing. If you guys have any good ones, share them down below. Um, if, for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't allow the links... Head on over to my Discord, link's also in the description, and there's a sharing links channel right there. You can share all kinds of links, whether it's self-promotion or links you want me to react to or whatever. Um, all kinds of links go in that channel. With that, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys on the next one.